1973, hell invaded the body of a young girl. Doctors wouldn't treat her. Psychiatrists dismissed her. Priests gave their lives to save her. This is Inside the Exorcist, a story of faith and fury, causes and curses, of the unbridled ego and brute force of filmmaking. From Wondery, this is a deep dive into the story behind The Exorcist, and you have to hear the fear for yourself. Here's a sneak peek of episode one. The following contains mature content. You've been warned. From Wondery, I'm Mark Ramsey, and this is part one of Inside November 22nd, 1993, McAllen, Texas. About 80 miles from the Gulf of Mexico, the old man sits in his wheelchair on his back stoop. He stares into the black evening sky. His hands clutch something, a pill bottle. It's full barbiturates, but the pain, always the pain choke them down, every one. He watched the empty pill bottle roll off the stoop and onto the ground. Hey, Bill, why don't you come on inside now? It's getting late and it's cold out here. Take me to bed. Bill Brinkley was 76. A celebrated author, his final novel was The Last Ship a book about the crews of an American destroyer and a Russian nuclear submarine who are the last survivors of a nuclear war. In 2014, it would become a TV series. The world would catch up with one man's bleak vision. Okay, we'll see you in the morning. Good night. Brinkley could feel the pills burst in his stomach as he lay quietly in his pitch-black room. Eyes wide open, he watched the room stretch and sway. He watched the walls bend. He felt the bedding loosen. He was not alone under those sheets. He felt himself sinking into the bed as if it was swallowing him whole. Bill, are you okay? I thought I heard something. I'm okay. Okay, good night. Staring into nothingness, seeing... What is it? He saw something swirling over him as if the ceiling had opened into a vast abyss one that was drawing him up he stretched out his arms he closed his eyes he felt his bedclothes dangle beneath him he felt icy sharp claws on his chest and back turning him in midair he stopped there was a vile hot breath in his face. As life drained away, he opened his eyes one final time. Bill Brinkley had been deeply depressed his friend said, depressed and terrified for a very long time. Brinkley had always been a writer. Before the books, he worked for the Washington Post. 
In 1949, he wrote the strangest story of his career, and it was all true. It was on the front page under the headline, Priest Freeze Mount Rainier Boy Reported Held in Devil's Grip. It was the most famous exorcism case in American history. He could never shake the things he heard and saw then. There was no distance in time and space great enough to set him free. That's when the nightmares began. And November 22nd, 1993 is when they would end. But that story about the exorcism of a 14-year-old boy in a tranquil enclave of suburban Washington, that story would not die. It would haunt that boy forever. It would stick in the imagination of one Georgetown student who would later transform it into a horrifying best-selling novel. And the film based on that novel would terrify generations of moviegoers convinced that you or I at any time could be possessed by a demon. And it all began with a boy known as Robbie. July 2017. Um, hello, is this Robbie or Rob? Yes. Are you the Rob whose exorcism in 1949 was the basis for the movie The Exorcist? Who is this? My name is, um, Mark Ramsey, and I'm, I'm, I'm creating a, a seven-part podcast on the making of the movie The Exorcist, and your story is the foundation for that movie, so I'd, I'd really love to to talk with you for just a few minutes about your experiences back in 1949. Would, would, would that be okay? Do not ever call me again. Saturday, January 15, 1949. Mount Rainier, Maryland. A pleasant, tree-lined neighborhood of close-packed stucco homes. Newsboys and pedestrians, smiles and waves. Everyone knew the folks next door. Even the mayor knew every resident by name. There were no strangers. There was nothing strange. It began with a drip. Robbie and his grandmother heard it. Robbie was a quiet boy, a private boy, not yet 14. I checked the faucet in the kitchen, Grandma. How about you? I checked the one upstairs. Nothing, Robbie. They followed the noise to Grandmother's room. Above the ceiling, in the walls, hanging over her bed, a painting of Jesus. As they approached, they could see... They could see it move. It was trembling, shaking, as if as if something was behind it, throwing a fist against the wall. They didn't move. They didn't breathe. They were in the middle of the room. They didn't touch anything. What made that noise? The dripping had stopped. Mom, Dad, you have to come upstairs and listen to this. What is it, Robbie? It sounds like, like, like claws scraping across wood. In the morning, an exterminator pulled up floorboards and ripped down wall panels. He was looking for rodents. He found nothing. It was a nuisance, an annoyance, but harmless. Harmless. A new day. Still, the mysterious scratching. Robbie's at home in the basement, alone. He's playing one of his favorite games. It was a gift from his Aunt Harriet in St. Louis. A polished wood board, a Ouija board. On it, all the letters of the alphabet, numbers zero through nine, in two words, yes and no. His fingers gently moved a small wooden platform, a planchette, across it. With this You can make contact with the spirit world, Aunt Harriet told him. The dead can speak to you. He wanted the dead to speak to him. He wanted it so very much. It was January 26, 1949, less than two weeks after the scratching noises started, and Aunt Harriet had suddenly died. 
So how was that for a taste? If you'd like to hear the rest of the episode as well as the entire episode too, go to the feed of Inside the Exorcist now. Simply search Inside the Exorcist on your favorite podcast player, or if you're listening on a smartphone, tap or swipe over the cover art of the podcast you're listening to right now, and you'll find a link on the episode notes. When you get to the feed of Inside the Exorcist, please remember to download the first two episodes and hit subscribe. That way you won't miss any new installments. We're thrilled to bring you Season 2 of Inside, Inside the Exorcist.